Learning to talk is a miracle of human development. Children are born with the capacity to communicate, and their oral language will flourish when they're surrounded by responsive adults. Today in California, more than one-third of all children entering school come from homes where a language other than English is spoken. They are the bilingual Californians of tomorrow. Cuando el niño aprende un día a comunicar con la gente, es maravilla increíble, es un milagro patente. Children beginning to speak is the miracle of learning. Being able to communicate with parents and teacher observing. This video presents four guiding principles with corresponding strategies that preschool teachers can use to foster the development of first and second languages. One, provide opportunities for children's language development. Two, facilitate language use in all interactions with children. Three, Promote oral language as a foundation for early literacy. And four, support bilingual language development. Debemos crear con los niños ambiente de aprendizaje y que con juegos y cantos desarrollen su lenguaje. Our children need a place where they can talk and can sing. A place for poetry too, finger plays and everything. Language use is encouraged in preschool settings designed for children to sit next to and across from each other as they play with manipulatives and work on projects. London Bridge falling down? Are you going to make a bridge? Let's see. The environment and the activities must be developmentally appropriate. In that case, it would mean dividing the center into a variety of different learning centers um, where children are able to interact with each other freely and with the materials, where the teacher plays a role of a facilitator, um, changing the environment to keep it interesting, and helping the children communicate with each other and serving as a model for communication. Duck is a mom. Eat ducklings, little babies. You really need to incorporate into any kind of preschool program powerful activities that generate language. And water play has and always will be a hit with children. Children just seem to set their imagination free, and that's what creates a really safe environment for them to just open up and interchange, you know, conversations and, and, and languages that they normally in any given setting would not attempt to do. Dramatic and symbolic play offer creative opportunities for young children to practice language and increase comprehension. She sick. She sick. She went to the doctor. What time? Three thirty. Dramatic play is very important because it allows children to use their imaginations, to use their creativity, to act out adult roles. You can have a dramatic play area and have a child that speaks Cantonese, a child that speaks Spanish, a child that speaks English, and they can all interact together in this very non-threatening situation that's familiar, it's playful, it's interesting, and it's fun. Changing the dramatic play area on a regular basis renews children's interest as they experiment with new materials.
From folk tales to music and poetry, all cultures have rich traditions of oral language that present a variety of opportunities for preschoolers to communicate. Incorporating music and rhyme and riddles and poems into a curriculum is important for language development because it's a very playful way of using language. Children learn about rhyme and they get to a certain developmental level and they can start to make rhymes and listen to words and the words that sound alike. They start to bring humor into their language so they're able to treat language in a more playful way and riddles and rhymes do that. Un elefante se balanceaba sobre la tela de una araña. Como veía que resistía, fueron a llamar otro elefante. Elefante. I use a lot of song, especially song accompanied by movements, finger plays, flannel board stories, um, animal characters that all provide a context for which the children can p gain clues to pick up what, what the content of the language is, regardless of whether they at first understand the specific words. We wiggle our fingers and stop. We wiggle our fingers and stop. We wiggle our fingers and wiggle our fingers and wiggle our fingers and stop. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Tiny, yes, in, yes, in, blend, blend, don't say. You don't understand. Listen to them talk, encouraging conversation. We help them with new words, finding fun in repetition. Hablando con los niños, escuchando y repitiendo. Compartimos experiencias y el lenguaje va creciendo. Preschool teachers are role models for language usage, demonstrating both joy and purpose in oral communication. There's lots of opportunities in a preschool to talk to children so that you can kind of think of yourself as just showering them with words and talking to them about what they see, what they hear, what they feel, talking to them all the time and giving them as much language as possible follow their lead, talk to them about their interests, things that interest them, and they'll be more ready to interact with you. Uh, I did a make an egg. Very good. Ponen las manos así. Entonces, ¿qué son? ¿Son personas o son muñecos? Muñecos no. ¿O animales o qué son? <laughs> No son de verdad los de Coco Paolo. No son de verdad? No, si sí son de verdad. Children will only understand what they can understand. And if we talk to them in a way or in a language that isn't comprehensible, it's just going to go right by them. They're not going to learn anything. It's always important to speak to them at their level developmentally. The other thing is that children learn best in an environment where there is no stress or low stress. We really need to foster their self-esteem because when they have that, they have the attitude which is going to make them be learners. Y ahora, te sueltas con una mano y después otra. Eso sí, muy bien. Sí, que eres capaz. Preschoolers communicate best with teachers who are attentive. Increasing wait time by pausing and giving children more time to respond allows for different individual and cultural styles. Yo quiero papita. ¿Te gustan las papitas? Sí, sí. sí. Yo tengo muchos bebés. ¿Todos esos? 
Listening is so important because it makes them realize how important that they are to begin with. Whether or not they can't speak your language, if you're listening to them, trying to hear and understand what they're saying, they realize that what they have to say is important. Um, and so they're more likely to be verbal. Yolanda. ¿Y aquí quién está? Otra vez en ley. Otra vez en ley. ¿Qué está haciendo en ley? Está leyendo un libro. Está leyendo un libro. Preschool teachers model language by restating children's speech with correct usage and fuller descriptions. Who do you think that man is that he's with? I wonder. I think he's daddy. Maybe it's his daddy? So what do you think his daddy's doing out here in this field? I think he's digging. 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 So lots of people work out in the fields, growing plants for and food. Sharp too. Yeah, there's something sharp here to dig with. Expanding children's language is something that also facilitates that language growth. If a child comes up and says, he going store, you can repeat that by saying, he is going to the store. What do you think he's going to buy? or he is going to the store, he's going to the shoe store. So you repeat what they say and you give them a little bit more information. Do it in a very non-threatening way. Never correct children's language. No, that's not the way you said that or laughing at children's language. But just repeat what they say in an adult form. La niña está en el barco y el niño está nadando. Ajá, y este ya se va a encuerar. Ya se encueró y está haciendo mucho calor, ¿verdad? Porque se está quitando la ropa y se va a meter al agua. Por acá. Mira, aquí salen los... Hmm. Los animales. Los Mira, animales, los la... gusanitos no, que se comen la lechuga. Then sitting on my chair. And then someone was broken my chair. Leyendo en alta voz, contando cuentos bonitos, promovemos el lenguaje hablado y también escrito. The stories that are told and the tales that we read create for them a special world where they find the skills they need. Oral language development helps support future reading and writing. Children enjoy telling stories or describing events as well as listening to storytellers. Pedro lived in a house where the bed squeaked and the floor creaked and outside the leaves sounded in the wind. Whoosh, whoosh. A Pedro no le gustó tanto ruido. Too much noise! I try to choose material which is repetitive enough and which um, has enough involvement and visual clues so that the children can pick up on the meaning of the story without having to understand every word of it. By weaving the story um, using both languages and without repeating the content, um, the children were forced to pay attention to the whole story independently of which language was being spoken. In that way, they were able to acquire new words. Entonces, se fue a ver a la mujer sabia. Anytime you can bring a story alive by using your body language and changing your voice as you change characters, allowing yourself to, to have fun with it, to be a little silly perhaps. You don't have to say moo, you can say mmm. Aquí tenemos a Jessica. ¿Quién es esta niña? Jessica. No, Diana. Diana. Uh -huh. ¿Y con quién está Diana? Liz. When we first show the, the photo albums to the children, 
we write down what they say. They might say who's in the picture, what they were doing, and that makes part of the album. I think photo albums is really important to show to children because it stimulates their language a lot. It's re relevant to them. It's their own pictures, the center's pictures, their friends. So it's easy for them to talk about them. Who is there? Mommy. Your mommy. Where were they? At work. At work? La mamá de Mari, ella hace la ropa para ella y hace una ropa tan bonita. Mira qué le hizo, mira hizo un pantalón corto y mira la camisa que hizo su mamá para ella y tiene una qué? Una flor. Una flor. Uy, ¿les gusta? Sí. Ay, qué bonita, ¿ha? Para que no haga calor con la camisa, no. no la, Sin camisa. When I'm telling a story, I really like to use flannel boards for a number of reasons. Number one is they're very visual and they're very big and they work well in a large group. The visual thing is good for children who are understanding all the words I'm using because it reinforces their vocabulary and it's also great for second language learners because if they're not sure of my vocabulary, I'm going to be showing them with my figures and with my hands and hopefully they will be able to understand what I'm saying through that. Adios, Mario! Reading to children inspires a love and appreciation of books. Reading introduces preschoolers to new vocabulary, helps them understand the sequence of events, and broadens their view of the world. Wow, what's that? A bone! Yeah, a bone! When you read to children, it's important to choose books that have nice, interesting, familiar illustrations, not a lot of text, and in some way tie the book and relate it to a child's experience so that they can get involved in the book. And if they get off on tangents, it's okay. Encourage that conversation and that interaction. And when he came to a place where the wild things are, there were their terrible wars, nag their terrible teeth, and roll their terrible eyes, and show their terrible claws. I read the story first, and I understand what's the story about. So when I read to them, I use my expression and to make it more interesting, I use a higher tune and low tunes. And I also point to the jar and that he's thinking. And when I use my finger point to the pictures, the children's attention is in the story. Children learn that written language is a desirable activity when their preschool contains numerous examples of print such as children's names on their cubbies, shelves labeled with both print and symbols, and waiting lists to identify turn-taking. A print-rich environment is at a place where you find lots of print, lots of words written, lots of letters. You are modeling, writing letters, you're practicing, you're allowing for children to have that practice. There's pencils around, there's paper around, there's chalk, there's chalkboards, there's all kinds of opportunities to bring print into your environment. It's important because kids begin to associate those letters and those words with meaning. And so it's a real essential part of learning to read and oral language development. <laughs> Hermano, 
que este el lenguaje de, de la escuela junto con el material van a ir formando al niño bilingüe y multicultural The children in our lives are indeed our future treasure Diversity in one more language are the hope beyond all measure To become fully bilingual, children must have a strong foundation in their primary language. Ongoing support for a child's home language is important, even if they have a significant knowledge of English. Listo? Pantalones. Camisa. Camisa. Suera. 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 Cachucha. Cachucha. It's important to support their home, lang their home language because uh, for their self-esteem, it's good for them to know that you can speak, you can be bilingual or trilingual. You don't have to be embarrassed. You can keep your language and you can keep your culture and still make it. By using a child's home language, preschool teachers validate the child's family and culture and help bridge the gap between home and school. Sometimes we have four or five parents that talk the same language and you can see them just, just talking and they just feel so comfortable they don't want to go home. We feel it's very important for the kids to see that the parents are comfortable because when the parents are comfortable, then the kids feel comfortable with us. Wow! Look at that tummy! Are we going to sing Happy Birthday? Uh, yeah. <laughs> In our classroom, we have children who speak um, primarily um, Chinese and Spanish, um, Laotian, Vietnamese. Because the um, children in my group are multi multilingual, I can't speak to many of them. I use all sorts of methods. I try gestures using sign language. A lot of times I ask parents to help. It's also really um, helpful to ask other children to help. You know, sometimes they feel shy speaking their own languages, but it's a way of encouraging them to use their own language and be proud of it and to be able to um, be bilingual. Senior citizens and other community members who speak the children's home language can also participate in preschool activities. <laughs> For preschoolers learning two languages simultaneously, one strategy is to have each language used consistently by different staff. One teacher may speak to children exclusively in English, while another staff member may speak to the children only in their home language. Les pregunto a todos, ¿Quién me ayudará a hacer este pan? ¿Qué dijo la ganza? Yo no. Yo no. ¿Qué dijo la gata? Yo no. Yo no. Does anybody else have a little can? That's paper. Good. That's a paper box. And that, does that go in the metal box? No. Does it go in the plastic? No. No. Does it go in the paper? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll put it in there. Language weaving is another strategy. While avoiding direct translations, the preschool teacher moves between two languages, ensuring that all children comprehend enough to participate. means big is the moon night. The big moon, full moon. Lo siento, no puedo hacer nada. For example, snack time, we could have Spanish speaking, English speaking, Chinese speaking. I could speak Spanish and English to the kid, then our, our, our assistant will speak Chinese and English to the kid. So that way, they're all, we're all communicating at the same time, but in different languages. Yeah. 
que... Ya no tiene. Ya no tiene. <laughs> okay, right here, buddy. In the group I just had, we had a couple of monolingual Spanish speakers and also a couple of monolingual English speakers. And one little girl who understands English but doesn't produce. So when I'm doing a project like a cooking project, I try to include both languages in the context that they can understand. And I also try to respond to them in their primary language. But if I think that they know what I'm talking about in the second language, I may go ahead and give them a second language cue also. ¿Qué vamos a poner aquí? That's it, the bread. Okay, good job, guys. Las toallitas, please, Efraín. Thank you very much. Okay, Efra. Tú así, puedes detener el bowl, así. Leanne, grab a spoon. Sarah, grab a spoon. You grab a spoon, Sarah, and help scoop it in. Dan, you want to help scoop in the bread? Okay, one, two, three, go. It's all soapy, isn't it? You got nice soapy water. That was a good idea to uh, ask me for soap. You knew exactly what you wanted. Incorporating props and imagination during dramatic play, sand and water play, or block play creates many opportunities for second language usage. Pick it all up, she wants to come on now. No, okay. In about five minutes, okay? Bye. Some effective second language strategies that can be used are to use a slower rate of speech, to have the most concrete information given at the very end, to point out, use visuals, point to things, use gestures, use facial expressions, repeat things, use repetition, use it in different contexts, paraphrase. Mm -hmm. She has her toothbrush. Okay. She brushes her teeth every morning and every night. How did you go to Bangladesh? On a plane. On a plane? He goes, Ooh. It's an airplane, isn't it? Yeah. Everything is in context. Have the objects there. Use my body. Use my words. Use my face to really get them to understand what I'm saying. A lot of times they can't fail. They can't fail with the second language because I'm going to say, pick up the cinnamon, and I'm going to point to the cinnamon, and that is success for them. And that's what I'm really hoping to do is make them successful in both languages. Language acquisition is one of the most important developmental tasks of early childhood, setting a foundation for future learning. Supporting first and second language development in preschool enriches our children, helping them gain the skills they will need in a multilingual world. Hablando con los niños, escuchando y repitiendo, compartimos experiencias y el lenguaje va creciendo. Leyendo en alta voz, contamos cuentos bonitos, promovemos el lenguaje hablado y también escrito. The stories that are told and the tales that we read create for them a special world. Where they find the skills they need Always use correct language When speaking to those you teach For cultures live in words With language their lives you'll reach Hay que ser muy cuidadosos Como se habla en el hogar Y una segunda lengua También vamos a enseñar El lenguaje de la escuela, junto con el material, van a ir formando al niño bilingüe y multicultural. The children in our lives are indeed our future treasure. Diversity in one more language are the hope beyond all measure.